Congress is back in session, and the new Republican majority in the House is preparing to challenge Democrats on the debt ceiling, the budget, and health care. Joining us right now, two representatives who will be on the front lines of these battles, Democratic Congressman Rob Andrews from New Jersey, also Republican Congressman Kevin Brady from Texas. And Congressman Brady, your party is now taking over the House, so what's going to be the way they go about attacking health care at this point? Well, obviously, our first priority is the economy and jobs. Our second one is limiting spending, and the third priority, which we're going to kick off next week is repealing Obamacare because it doesn't lower health care costs. It's going to drive the deficit dangerously in the future and replace it with some more common sense reforms I think the American people want. So it is a priority. We're going to get right after it and uh, looking forward to it. Although, Congressman Brady, this is likely to pass in the House. It's not likely to pass in the Senate. And even if it did, the president himself would veto it. So is this more than just uh, making a statement at this point? Well, actually, I think there's two things here, two principles. One is we never really had a debate uh, on this bill uh, last year. It was rushed through, uh, drawn up in the middle of the night, all these special interest provisions. Uh, the public never to get to see it. So we're going to have the debate America never had. Secondly, you know, four years ago, we started, a number of us said it's time to ban earmarks to, to get our financial house in order. Everyone said it won't pass the Senate. The president won't sign it. Well, today, that is that is the case on Capitol Hill. So just because the Senate may resist and the White House may be fighting it doesn't mean we don't need to have this fight. Congressman Andrews, your party is now in the minority in the House. How is this go debate going to take place, and how do you think this plays out in the rest of the Congress? Well, I think the debate should be about creating jobs in the country. Kevin is right, but they haven't put one word in any bill on the House floor that creates jobs. It's incredible to me that I think they were elected in an election that was all about high unemployment, but they've done nothing. And spending cuts, let me ask Kevin this. You guys ran on a promise to cut $100 billion from this year's budget. Are you going to do that? Yeah, we are. In fact, we're going to return to 2008 billion. levels. And this week, I'm introducing a bill oh. to cut $150 billion from the spending. It's the recommendations of the president's own yeah. bipartisan deficit that's, that's uh, not, that's, commission. That's not, that's and not what, that's and not I'm what anxious that's not what your leadership for, uh, saying. for you, Rob, well, to, uh, to join us with saying. that. Yesterday, they backed off that $100 billion number and said that's not really quite what they meant. So will the spending cut that's bill on the floor only, cut $100 billion? Yeah, will it? we're going to return to the 2008 levels. And as you know, the only reason there's some confusion is that you didn't even offer a budget. No. We're in a temporary spending. You've created such a mess, it's hard to figure out what is on the no, books. There's only, I can there's guarantee only you this. No. There's Republicans only confusion, are no, there's only confusion us because you ran on pre one thing and doing another. And pre bailout levels. <laughs> the confusion here is you promised a hundred billion dollar spending cuts, and now apparently that's not what you're gonna deliver. I uh, just want to know what. why that is. Feel Cong free to Congress match us. Congressman Feel Andrews, free to match us. Congressman Andrews, it's great to, to, to your your laser focus on job creation uh, at this right. point after a year and a half uh, on health care. I know you remember that because we talked about it constantly did, here uh, about health care. Isn't it possible? You hear the Chamber of Commerce, I know they've been vilified, small businesses. There's a lot that say that health care raised the specter of uncertainty on how to handle uh, benefits for these guys. And it, it definitely dampened uh, job creation. Isn't it possible that, that maybe trying to change certain aspects of health care or even repeal it could be a positive for job creation? That's well, uh, absolutely positive. That's absolutely impossible. Yeah, no, I didn't say that. I think that positive changes to the bill are welcome, and I would certainly welcome that. But, Joe, did the number of jobs in the economy go up or down after the health care bill was passed? You, now, this is a cause and effect because of because of the health care. So it, going from not, no, I'm not necessarily saying it's direct cause and effect. But if this was such a job killing bill, which is the mantra of the week, did the number of jobs go up or down since last March? Is 9.8 percent the kind of number you were hoping for nope. after the 800 billion dollars? Nope. Okay, did, we want a more. But can you answer uh, my let question? Let me ask I, uh, you. I answer you answer mine. Did Joe, the, did the Joe, 800 billion dollars in stimulus cause Joe? unemployment to go to 9.8? I think it's far too high, but let, now answer my question. Did the number of jobs in the economy go up or down after the job-killing health care bill was passed? The, the recovery uh, coincided with the, uh, you know, it was simultaneous with the passage of health care. We've seen the no, recovery but, but, but start. Your, but your question implied that people were so stressed about the effects of the no, bill. Uh, no, I'm saying that, that one, of the, one, of the effects that one of the effects that could have dampened businesses 
from, from taking you know, risk and from spending cash could have been the regulations from healthcare and some of the pending regulations from, uh, uh, from FinReg and some yeah. of the uncertainty about taxes. Why I think that's true, which is why in December we did the right thing and had the agreement on taxes, the bipartisan agreement. I think we should do more of that. Why don't we have, try to have a bipartisan agreement to reduce the deficit, which I think would remove a lot of uncertainty you're talking about. Kevin, could you help us with that? Well, I'll tell you what I will help you with is getting you in touch with businesses who say after the health care bill passed, they saw higher health care prices going for their employees. They did. I can't find a company who said, no, let's add more workers. In fact, unemployment is higher today than it was when that bill passed. It created a great deal of uncertainty Kevin, on top of the rest of the mess yeah. that's been going on. That's why November produced a different different majority in Congress, why are you going to see us act differently too? Kevin, didn't, didn't Caterpillar announce plans to build a new plant in your home state in Texas in 2012 that would add and about the, 500 jobs? And the reason for that? I don't know. Is it we're selling it, exports but, around the but, world? But is it we're creating one, jobs and going and out there? Good and that is but, the Republican they were, they were uh, strategy for jobs. They so. were one of the companies you guys cited that were going to have to cut way back when Caterpillar the was passed? the first Caterpillar was the first company to say that they're going to take a hundred billion dollar million dollar charge off because of the increased health care prices and I wouldn't building, use them as an example yeah well they're building a new plant in Texas though aren't they well they are not to doing it because of health care I, I don't know how that. productive this discussion is or how it's many just, things we're going to get to or resolve with things thrown out like this but let me ask you this is there a chance that you two gentlemen will help with working across the aisle to try and get things taken care of namely sure. jobs on the one hand and the deficit on the other. Well, we did. I think we both supported the, uh, the tax compromise. I think it was a very wise one. I think you voted for that, Kevin, didn't you? I did, In absolutely. December. I think it was a good thing. I think we should do more of that. Okay, so where, let, let's talk about an area that we might see some more. It, it, you both sound concerned about the deficit. Let, let's try and figure out where we're going to be headed with that. Kevin, you said you're going to be introducing a bill later this week that will implement some of the, uh, some of the recommendations from the President's Commission on the deficit? We identified about $153 billion of cuts that the President's Own Deficit Commission said w was time for. We laid that out in a bill that we'll be introducing, I think today or tomorrow, about $153 billion. It is not uh, the Republican plan that's still being formulated, but it lays out some of the ideas on how we right-size this government because, as you know, we are facing a debt limit. And the question isn't, will we pay our debts? We will. The question is, are we going to get our financial house in order? And are we going to cut up the credit cards? Are we going to get serious about uh, getting our books in order? We are serious about doing it. And I welcome Rob and any Democrat who wants to get our books in our financial house in order again. And Rob, that sounds like an arena you agree with? Yeah, that's something I will read his bill, and I think he's on the right track. That's the kind of thing should be on the floor next week. That, that jobs are the issue and the deficit, I think, is impinging on jobs. We should work on that and not this political theater that's going to be on the floor for a little while next week. That's not what I think we're sent here to do. All right. Well, Congressman, I want to thank you both for your time today. You. Again, Rob Andrews, Kevin Brady.